special treat, a rare occasion. So let's not waste any time. Let's make it official. Good people of East Brunswick, New Jersey, and the surrounding counties and towns, please, a big East Coast for welcome to Mr. Jensen Ackles and Tiffany Morgan! Thanks, guys. Bye, Rich. Bye. All right. Yeah, he never sticks around anymore. I thought for sure bringing Jeff out. Find out. No. I haven't seen these guys in a long time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go, brother. Hey, let's let's go, Dad. Well, son. <laughs> it's going all right. Good to have you here, man. It's good to be here. Uh, did you bust a knee on that one? I might have, I might have pulled some. Do you want the uh, surgeons in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Bone yeah. doctors? Lawyer. What's that? A personal injury lawyer. A personal injury lawyer. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> that might get us into some trouble. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> How are you, pal? Well, I'm really good. You look good, man. Yeah, you look good. The time's been good to you. Off the old block. This guy. <laughs> Time has been. I feel like you looked like this ten years ago. <laughs> okay, which was that's what's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny because right, it's obnoxious. And he knows because I was just talking to him last night about this very thing. All of a sudden, the last three years, I look in the mirror and I'm like, I don't recognize me anymore. I'm like, I'm getting fucking old. <laughs> oh no, no, it's cool. I'm good with it. I'm gonna start. Next time you see me, though, if I have a black beard, sorry. <laughs> oh, this is just for men. Well, I want to get old like that. That's. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you know, for 17 years is that what it's been? Uh, I gotta do the math, but yeah, it's, it's about 18 years. 18 years. Yeah. Wow. I think it was good. Yeah. We didn't have kids. There was a time we didn't have kids. There was? Wives. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Neither do I. <laughs> there's, a, there's a comedian who does a whole bit about people that have kids and people that don't. And, uh, <laughs> like, the people that don't have kids that drive by a restaurant be like, oh, that looks like a lovely restaurant. We should go there sometime. <laughs> people that do have kids are like, oh, that looks like a lovely restaurant. We will never go there. Yeah. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Yeah, my wife and I constantly are like, someday. That's our new thing. Someday. Our new thing. someday. Yeah. Don't know when, but someday. I wrote, uh, <laughs> I wrote to Neil a note um, that was sweet. when we first, well, it was the last one I ever wrote. Uh, <laughs> when we first, uh, first started crushing on each other. And, um, and we were, <laughs> we were both uh, previously, uh, you know, tied up with other people. Um, and so I just wrote her a note and said, I, 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 well, I was dating somebody, she was dating somebody. And, um, Shady. Yeah. <laughs> but man, we were young, you know? But I wrote her a note. I said, not now, like, but someday. <laughs> I did a wrote, not now, but someday. Uh, and she still has it. Okay, I wasn't me. Whatever it was. Um, See? Yeah, yeah. Shady. And James introduced me to her. Um, yeah, and it was like the 4th of July. Like, I think I've told the story, but he, he calls me up. He's like, hey, man, what are you doing? I just got back into town. I'm like, oh, I'm actually right down the street from your new house that you just got um, with a, a, with Daniel and, and, a, and a friend of ours. And um, he's like, oh. He's like, well, mind if I join you? I was like, please, get your ass over here. Have a, have a, have a beer with us. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we're sitting there, like, right by the front window. It's this Irish pub in, in L.A. And we're sitting right by the front window. And, and up drives this motorcycle. It was, it was your Harley. Yeah, you, you just got it. Yeah, it was the night ride. Blacked out the night ride. Blacked out the night ride, yeah. And he pulls up, not knowing that we're sitting right in front of him, pulls up right in front of the place and parks it. And I feel like everything went in slow motion. He like got off his bike, the helmet came off, and he was like, 
And I, I go, oh, there he is. And I look over at Hillary and just like jaw on the table, just like, Because she didn't know who he was. She just, she just saw what she saw. And that was, that was it, man. It was, you walked in, you walked in and did the same thing. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, get a hold of yourself, Hillary. Come on. I yeah. Like, you a friend of mine. And I'm like, Hillary, really, this is, oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of the way. <laughs> and then we, we went, we got, we drank a little bit, and then we went back to my house, and I just remember Jensen in my pool, which was like 40 degrees. It was cold as hell, and he's like, he drunk. I was the original ice bath guy. And, and he sat in that thing for like three hours while Hillary and I flirted. I don't know what Daniel was. Daniel was just like, what am I doing here? <laughs> for the whole time. But also, I was like on your first date with Daniil, I was in Vancouver, she came up to visit you to go on an official date, because I think you were finally single. Y yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> you invited me! <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea, it was the first date, about halfway through, I'm starting to get the, I, what am I doing here? <laughs> This is awkward, but I'm saying. I was like, listen, if I give you one of these, we gotta go. That's uh, if I give you one of these, you gotta go. So <laughs> oh man, no history here. None, none whatsoever. Oh, right. Um, well, we could we could chat all day about that stuff, but you guys probably have some questions, so let's let's do that. Are you like, man? I don't know. You guys just. Gonna... Chat it up. You chat it up. <laughs> uh, no, let's uh, we'll start over here. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. Good. My name's Tia. I'm from Alabama, North Carolina. Yeah, Alabama. Yeah, come visit. <laughs> well, I have a house that <laughs> I do. I'll be there all summer. Just come say hi. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going. That's for sure. <laughs> Me and Tia will be hanging out. Your favorite memory of a backstage moment from one of the conventions? A backstage moment? Well, backstage, on stage, with a fan, like anything. Uh, for me, it's when I told everybody that I was having a daughter. <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. Oh, New Jersey? Yeah. It was the stage. I'm probably going to say something real stupid today. <laughs> <laughs> something about Jersey. <laughs> Jersey brings out the best. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to choose from. Uh, I, will, I will say um, I will never forget the, the moment that uh, this, was, this was at Comic-Con in San Diego when we had announced the show was coming to an end. And Jared and I walked out to a crowd of seven thousand people, and and I just I turned to him just before we walked out, and I was like, "Take this in, because this is it." And and we went out there, and we just like put our arms around each other, and I think we we both got a little emotional and had to, <clears throat> had to pull the britches up and <laughs> get get tough guy real quick because we were about to do an entire panel for an hour. Um, I remember I was there. I was. The other show, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember your panel. I remember watching it like somehow live. There was a lot of yeah, heat back in the green room. room. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, that was a that's a moment I'll never forget. And I'm glad that I, I'm, I'm glad that we took that moment because usually you just walk out and do this. You sit down and then they introduce the the rest of the panel. But uh, I walked. I think I walked out first and I stood there and I I waited for him to come and join me and then we stood there together and just it was it was pretty memorable. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you in the other way. <laughs> See you on the beach. Bye. Right. Hi guys, my name is Pepper. Um, Jeffrey, I want to start by saying I know a lot of people give John a hard time about being a dad the way he was. What? I think, I think, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Way to bring that up. Yeah. You know what? Bring it up. We, we got some people here. We'll fight you to the nail. I'm on your side. Okay, I, good. I, John did the best he could with the situation during that time. Yeah. I'm, yeah. John did the best he could given the situation during that time. I thought so too. And, and the, the tools that he had. 
to be a dad, which wasn't the normal tools a father would normally have. And you have to remember, it was the 70s. It was the 70s. And if those of you, well, it wasn't the 70s. It, was, it would have been like the 90s. Whatever. Right? Was it the 70s? 78. Listen to all y'all. Everyone has a different answer. And you're all right. It would have, yeah, I guess it would have been 80s. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad we figured that out, guys. And we did that together. I feel good. I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sorry, what's your question? So, um, you kind of said that there was going to be an announcement when you were in um, Italy, but... Smooth. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm still waiting to be able to say anything, but, uh, and I, I got in trouble uh, oh. last convention for saying even a little bit of stuff, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my mouth shut until I... Let's take a guess! Listen. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> it's not hard to figure out, but uh, uh, I... Um, yeah, when as soon as I as soon as I am allowed to talk about it, I will I will definitely I can't wait to, to share. Um, but it's, all smooth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, no comment. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, I, it's it, it, it's it's all it's all good things, and and when I can, uh, it'll there's supposed to be an official like press release thing about, about it at some point, but, and, but I don't control that. That's, uh, that's above my pay grade. Yeah, I'll say it. <laughs> don't you see it? I kind of work on it. We don't want to mess that up. Uh, yeah, I know. I was hoping it would have been able, I would have been able to talk about something today, but the, the, no, no, no go. You're driving this out way too Dude, I know. It's crazy. It's like scammer. It's, like, it's, like, it's not easy. Because I'm usually like, but. So. He's having a girl. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll let you know when I can. Thank you. <laughs> I've already got two girls, man. I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those girls are rough. Girls, man. Yes, they are. But, man. but, woo. They only, oh, oh, yeah. going to be the death of me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right, because I got one that's going to be the death of me, but I got one that's going to take care of me take while I'm on my deathbed. Yeah. yeah. Mine's going to be torqued over my grave. <laughs> Like me that day. <laughs> oh, there's an image. Uh, please change the subject for us. It's got legs. <laughs> it's got legs. It will do. Yeah. Um, look, I think he, 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 you know, much like all of us, there's been a series of, of forks in the road that, and we have either chosen which way to go or the, the path has been chosen for us. And um, I will. Uh, I was talking about this at dinner last night. Uh, that when I was in high school, um, it was uh, I was I was like eat drink, sleep, baseball for like three years. And finally my senior year, the theater department teacher comes and I've been doing drama as an elective during 
during school, but then my, you know, all the extracurricular stuff was, was sports. And so the other teacher comes to my baseball coach and says, hey, um, I know it's in season right now, I don't know if you guys are, the playoffs are coming up, but I really want one of your players to try out for, or to, to be in the spring musical. And coach is like, who? <laughs> So it was me, and and, uh, and I only knew about that conversation because I got called into the coach's office, and he said, "Hey, listen, I got a, a, a had a this guy to come and talk to me, and uh, said that you she really wants you to, to to do this spring musical, spring play." And I was like, "Well, yeah, coach, we got playoffs coming up." He's like, "I know." He said, "You give me about three solid years of good baseball." He's like, "You know, there's a," and he said this not not in so bluntly, but. In an actually nice way, but he's like, you're not good enough. You're not getting, you're not getting scouted by any. You're not going to get a ride to, to college. And you're not going to definitely not go all pro. He's like, but you're a good ball player. He's like, that said, you're really good looking. You, <laughs> he says, you're only, you're only high school once. He's like, you should try to get as much out of it as you possibly can. Maybe go, go give this a shot. I promise we'll be sitting in the front row. And. From, for a Texas coach back in the season of the 90s, like that was not heard of, you know? And so I went and I didn't play, and there happened to be a talent scout that came and watched the play. And it came up to me afterwards and said, We think you got it, kid. I think you should move to LA. And I was like, Yeah, take a hike. <laughs> but he went and talked to my dad and my mom and, and told them, and they said, Well, if you want to give it a shot, you should give it a shot. And so I thought about it for a few months, and instead of going to college, I went to LA. I never turned back. So that was that was certainly a, something that a, a moment in my life that really kind of changed its direction. What was the part? Tony and West Side Story. <laughs> that was it. And I've never sang in my life in front of anybody. I was terrified. And they put me the girl who played Maria. Her name was Kendra Ware. Kendra, if you're out there somewhere, I hope you're well. Uh, and she was Just like, she was like a all-state soloist choir person, like could sing, you know, like Adele. And here I have never sang my life, but she hadn't done theater, so she was nervous about the acting parts, and I was nervous about the singing parts. So we helped each other out. Yeah. But I, first, first solo I come out, it was a, it's that song that who knows could be there's something new. I don't know, I don't know. And there's this proceeding up in the front of the stage, and I kind of said, It may be fun if I went down from the sky, I believe, and it's like, I know just in the front two rows, my whole baseball team went like this. <laughs> I was like, Well, there's no turning back now. I'm really gonna get beat up after this. They, I didn't, they all came up and very uh, awkwardly said, uh, that, was, uh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, uh, that was that. That's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> I like that story. I, I, I don't have anything uh, that compares to that. No baseball team or, or, or nice people. <laughs> no coach told me you can't do this anymore. You know what, for me, it, it was uh, that year that I was doing Supernatural Grey's Anatomy. It just changed. <laughs> yeah. and, and, I, and I've told the story a million fucking times. Um, but that's the truth, and that's when it all kind of happened. I've been kicking around for 20 years um, doing pilots that didn't get picked up. And sliders. Guest that, sliders, thank you. <laughs> really, sliders. Um, guest star spots, sliders. Um, anything to keep a roof over my head, just try to keep in the door, but it really wasn't until, you know, Grey's Anatomy and Supernatural, same time, uh, and, and then, you know, it, it, thankfully it hadn't stopped. It's been going since then, which is, yeah, yeah that's 17 years ago. Yeah, so, it's been a good ride. Yeah, it's been a decent ride. You yeah, know, no leaves for blanks. Yeah, there's, and there's a lot of folks, and he knows a lot, and I know a lot that, that were grinding it out in, in back in the day in the you know early two thousands just trying to get a foot in that door and trying to you know people people are greatly, still greatly talented people. Hugely talented. You know, and, and just just couldn't never just never crack a code or just never 
you know, never was the right place at the right time. And I think it's largely that too. The success of this industry is really uh, largely being being at the right or right place at the right time. Um, and it has been it's been really good to us, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know people that are my age um, that still haven't got that break. That are still out there pounding the pavement and hoping and praying. And man, it's rough. It's hard. It's harder now, I think. I think way harder now. Than to get in than it was when we were yeah. when we were because now, especially with COVID, everything's gone remote. So you don't have to live in Hollywood anymore to get into the industry. Uh, he and I don't even meet. We well, I didn't know how about the, that to get an agent or anything these days. I don't even know how that. I wouldn't know how to work. No, yeah. no. You used to don't do ask that. us for advice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how do you get into that? It's so different now that I wouldn't know what to say. It's but like we get, you know, supernatural. We get a guest star come out and be like, uh, you, "Are you local? Or you can come up to LA?" And like, no, I'm living in Cleveland. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send in a tape. Wow. Got the call back, and, and they sit me. Wow. So especially now, like it's all zooms. It's all yeah. It's, it's like you're never going into a room and reading for people face to face, which is what he and I did. Yeah. Man, auditioning was worse. Or, I, had, I was horrible. It's the worst. It's a rough way to go. Yeah. Um, so you just spin yarns. I would just lie and tell stories in the room, trying to get people to like me because I knew the audition. Every, every yeah. has the same fucking audition. There's yeah. Try to try to charm the pants off, yeah. and, you know, the first few seconds before they, you know, want you to read, and it's and that that usually will get you, if not that role, another role That's in the right. project. Yeah. And then some people are really good at auditioning, and then you put them on a set, and you can't act their way out of a paper bag. Some of them are still working today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to name any names. And we work with a few of them. Come on, meet still here. Yes, meet just still here. I think he's still on his job. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> things and you know different part because the whole thing is a custom custom made uh suit these things are like a couple hundred thousand dollars and they're works of art uh lj who is the uh the super suit uh, designer she's just an incredible uh her and her team are just incredible but um i remember i was I, we were texting and you texted me something something randomly and i was i happened to be at one of my fittings in la and I was like, I was like, hey man, can't talk right now. I'm actually in a soldier boy fitting. And he was like, I need a picture of the car piece immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, wait, I'm glad you asked it because you're asking, asking me to pick it out right now. And I had like five of them lined up. And then I sent you a picture. And I was like, which one, bro? And he was like, I like, don't pick it out right now. <laughs> so I did, and I come out, and then I'm like, <laughs> And then LJ was like, no. <laughs> no, we don't. She said, we already have one of those. <laughs> and his hand, the Homelander. Uh, yeah. He does thrust that He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's quite a piece. Uh, so uh, I, I won't say the kind of piece, although that is a, that is a funny, uh, funny fun fact for you. But my favorite part about the, uh, about the suit, uh, I have, I have so many parts that I did like, <laughs> probably more than I did like. I, I would say um, my, my favorite part was, and this isn't really the suit, but it is part of the whole package. The boots that I wore were the same boots that the Winchester wore for 15 years. <laughs> nice. I was used to it. Uh, 
she asked me, she's like, you know, we're doing more, more military, because it's a soldier war, we're doing military style boot. And she sent, like, she sent to my house in, in Austin a few, uh, a few options. And I was like, these are very similar to the ones that Dean wore. And, I, and so I just I messaged her and I was like, you know, these can work, one of these can work. However, I do know that there is a, a company that makes a boot that I've never gotten sick of in 15 years and I can stay on my feet for 14 hours a day and my feet don't hurt at the end of it. And she was like, well, what are they? They're called Carolinas. And um, and so she's like, well, then that's what we're gonna get. So she got the same. That's awesome. Uh, no. But I, I, I just, I love that because of, of the connection there. Could you go to the bathroom in that suit? <laughs> yes. Oh, good. And that was actually a, uh, a conversation that we had. And she said, yeah, I, uh, I think Chase hates me. And I think, uh, I think Jesse hates me because she didn't know some suits on the boys that she did not make access panels. But it's well, right. I, mean, I, had a, I had a little bit. They just went together like pants. Oh, good. But the, what happened was the top was zipped to the bottoms. So I had bottoms and then the top and then the whole thing was zipped together. And they put the big utility belt on. So they're in the big companies. And, and, and it did, there's like a whole team of people that it takes to get out of that thing. Yeah. Like the chest piece doesn't move. It's like a solid, like, oh, they're rough. Ballistic chest piece that I just, I couldn't move. So if I was like doing fight scenes, I, I felt like an idiot. But it looked cool. It looked really cool. It looked cool. Right, what was your favorite part about the suit? That was a door opening for you. Should have walked right now. That was it. That was it. Just laid it out for you. It's low hanging fruit. <laughs> oh! Gross. Fucking gross. <laughs> it's a daughter. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it does God. have legs. It's got legs. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Kirby from South Carolina. Oh, oh my God. What? Wait, what? Oh my God, that story. I'm Mandy from upstate New York. What's that Before I even came to I saw a TikTok where it was like this old interview you did or panel where you were making a story about Kirby from South Carolina and she like fell down in front of you. Yeah. So all weekend I'm going yeah, I'm sorry. Who told that story? Yes. Oh, okay, so it wasn't me. This <laughs> <laughs> Jensen? Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we 
I love this story. We were all in the one, one shop and, and, and just like, listen, they've got to recognize this or we're bailing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, for sure. So I feel like you kicked the door in. Um, and then off our scooters. Yeah, there was one guy getting, getting some ink done, and then there was another guy behind the desk. And, and he, we walk up, and he looks at us, and he's like, can I help you? And Jeff's like, yeah, we're just looking to get a couple small tattoos real quick. And he's like, well, I could, I could probably fit you in about an hour. And Jeff's like, cool, we'll be back. It's like the place. <laughs> So, so we go down the street, pull into another one, and, and we walk in the door, and there's a guy who happened to be the, the owner of the shop doing this big leg piece on another guy, and he looks up and he goes, Holy shit, get out of the <laughs> And Jeff looks at me and goes, This is the place. <laughs> that is a true story. And we had no idea what we were going to get. Of course, then I was like, well, I'll get like 70 on each finger. And then Jensen gets up, and Jensen was like so ready to go. And then you're like, oh, maybe just think on my thumb. Just walk in. Yeah, you change your thumb, like, or change your mind. Like, oh, that was a good one. And then, uh, and then the guy was like, I can't believe we tattooed Negan and Soldier Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even supernatural. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, we finished up in like, you know, it was like 10 minutes. It took no time at all. Well, he took a little more time because he was like, <laughs> and you're looking at me going, like, I run out of ideas, I need some more ideas here. And we're like, you're running out of knuckles, pal. Yeah. Okay, put a smiling face on my face. What is this? It's smiling face. That was my favorite one. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's some booze and cheap tattoos along the way. That was a good day. That was a good day. Oh, my God. I don't know if the upgrade of the test was my helmet, but that was even living on the edge. Yeah, that's a good time. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Jess from Westford, Massachusetts. Hello. Uh, and uh, so I have a statement and a question. The statement is, please let Kripke know we want him at a con. We all have yeah. questions. Yeah. So I'm good. He would be either really good or be really boring because he's so careful with the information that leaks out of his mouth that he might just be like, no comment on everything. <laughs> <laughs> or if he was able to, he could he could give you like the dissected version of every question and, and answer. It would be awesome. I would like to be in that audience when he finally decides to I'd like to ask a question. I know, man. <laughs> I've got questions. I got stuff. Uh, I, uh, I I hope he does. I, I know it's it's been on his radar. In fact, he's actually mentioned it to me that he would be interested in it. But the man works like just a monster, and it uh, I think it'll have things will have to slow down a little bit in the world um, for that to happen. And I, I hope it does. I mean, for his sake, like he's, he's well, so one busy. more year at boys, right? I mean, that's, there's a lot of rumors. Uh, there's no, nothing official. I mean, look, he said that there was only going to be five seasons of Supernatural, and there were 15 freaking seasons. I don't think the boys are going to go 15 seasons. However, what they say right now is, that, you know, there's no talent. There's no talent. However, I do, I do wish that he, you know, he does get a... a a break sometime soon because he works his ass off and uh, and hopefully in that break he can come and talk to us about some stuff. Awesome, thank you. Thank and you. Actually, yeah. My, sorry. Yeah, no, what's up? So that was my statement, my question. Oh, yeah. Nashville, <laughs> was, um, Nashville was incredible and I don't know how you do that after a full con weekend and had that kind of energy. That show was amazing and all of us want to know if there's hope for touring in the future. <laughs> Well, thank you. It took a lot of drugs. To <laughs> He's not lying. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, uh, obviously we were very thrilled with the success of that show. Uh, it was incredibly nerve-wracking because there were so many moving parts to get that thing done. Uh, and you know, these guys can certainly attest to. I mean, we had 13 people on that stage that night, and just the thought of like. 
you know, the, our, our drummer calling the night before and being like, I got a family emergency, I got a bail. Like, the, all, anything could have happened. The soundboard could have gone out. The, you know, the air conditioning in the building could have, you know, anything. So I was just really nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, just uh, put a lot of pressure on myself. And I remember at the end of it, I was like, Steve was like, pretty badass, wasn't it? And I was like, I never want to do that again. <laughs> but then after that settled down, and I was like, okay, maybe we should talk about doing that again. Um, touring, touring might be aggressive, um, but uh, uh, but anything's on the table. I don't know. I gotta I gotta talk to my partner to talk about that. Thank you. Appreciate it. I uh, I watched that show online. And and I remember I texted you and went, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, it was really good. <laughs> I remember the first one I ever did was in Vegas, and it was the first time Jensen ever got up on stage and sang. And that was, I were old. <laughs> and and <laughs> I remember the initial thing, and I was like, well, let's get one or two songs. And yeah, it was super fun. 17 songs set. Yeah, man. But then, yeah. but then the, 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 the real shitty part of that was we had to follow probably one of the best performances I've ever seen out of these guys. You guys just like lit it up. And I turned to Steve and I was like, this was a bad idea. This was a very bad idea. Why? Why, why would we do this to ourselves? We're so much better than we are. <laughs> you guys you should follow. Bad. You should. I know. No, you guys, you guys lit that place up. It was, it was awesome. What a fun night that was. It was good. Um, thank you. But you said you had another show or two, so. I know, I know. I gotta figure that out. You could maybe like an acoustic set or something a little more strict on it. But the big, the big band like, with the horns and the strings is so, so fun. Uh, sorry. Hi. Hi, guys. I'm Mary Ellen from Massachusetts. Not curvy from South Carolina. Not that drunk today. Not that drunk. Jeffrey, this goes to you. I do love you because people are gonna boo me. I am not a John Rochester fan. I'm a U fan, but not John. But I'm saying this because in watching the Winchesters, I told Drake that seeing and this goes to you, Dunson. I feel like you did. You changed my heart about John. Like I was able to see him in a better light, and I hope that we get more of that. Whether and I hope that it can change the way we see him, not just in possibly the Winchesters, but if you guys do more supernatural, which I know you talk about. Well, I just saw a quote from Drake yesterday from this stage where he's like, "I want to be more of an asshole like Jeffrey's John," <laughs> but he didn't want to because he's scared all you. And I'm like, don't be a weenie. <laughs> Fuck up. They're only been for like 20 years. They'll forgive you. They'll forgive you eventually. Uh, well, thank you, Evan Winchester. That, and that was the conversation that, that Robbie and I and, and Drake had at, uh, at Link uh, about, you know, what, what this John um, pre- Kind of the supernatural of it all, pre basically pre Mary's death, um, what what he would be like, and, and we really did have wanted to focus and make him uh, make him a much more approachable character, because it you know it would I think it would have been an obvious choice to make him the same type of person. But there's no shift, and I think that's a beautiful thing in storytelling is when a character goes through something so traumatic that it changes them. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, I don't think that, you know, obviously it's arguable whether or not John was changed for, for bad or for good, because what he did was he set out to do good. Even though it was a vengeful mission, he was he was setting out to right a wrong, because he had gotten wrong, and his wife and his family had gotten wrong, so he was set, he had set out to right that wrong. Now, obviously the debate is whether how he did that, whether that was the right way or the wrong way, but nonetheless, it, it changed John. That moment changed him. And so I wanted there to be a different type of John in the Winchesters so we could see a glimpse of what he was like prior to that. And I think Drake's, I think he did a great job. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well, did a great job. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's good. Hi. Hi, 
I'm Alice from right here in New Jersey. Hi, right, Alice. Um, this sort of answers a question for Jensen, but then when I realized Jeffrey was coming too, I realized you both could answer it. Um, <laughs> you both had the opportunity to do a lot of different formats of acting and entertaining, from a lead on a standard 23 episode series to an ensemble member to a streaming series to voice acting to movies. What's your favorite format to play in? Uh, the, 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 the one with the best writing. <laughs> like for real. So it's probably not going to be a 23 episode one. Because that's really hard to keep up a level of writing. Um, Lately, there's so much kind of good stuff out there. Streaming has kind of changed the game. It's also kind of put a huge dent in the business because everybody thought they could follow in Netflix and Amazon's footsteps, and they can't. And so a lot of a lot of the shows that we've watched and love are in trouble right now. They don't have the money uh, anymore because everybody gave up on commercial television, which is crazy because that's how you get your money. Anyway. Um, but you follow the best script. You hope you get the best script, you get the best people to work with. A lot of it, it again, is luck. You don't know half the time uh, if it's good. How would we know Supernatural would be Supernatural when we did the pilot of it, you know? You never know. Grace and it was, it was good writing, though. Like, when that pilot was, like, it stands up, it holds up today. For me, how I knew it was good writing was the soundtrack that was involved in the pilot. That's, it, was in, it was in the yeah. script. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, with this kind of music, it's going to be a killer show. It was the very first page yeah. uh, that he wrote, like, and then uh, and fade in, oh, yeah. fade in yeah. with a with a classic rock tune, yeah. not this. What was it? It was like anorexic pansy emo <laughs> bullshit. I want, I want hard rock. Yeah. And and when I read that, he's classic. Yeah, yeah, ACDC, Zeppelin, and I, I remember reading that too and going, oh man, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's immediate, yeah, yeah, you know. Um, it paints such a good picture, too. And Kripke is so just fantastic at doing, at painting a picture with his words. But there's also, you know, there's also good scripts that you can get, and they can get so screwed up. Um, yeah. I never on purpose. <laughs> I never on purpose do a shitty movie. But I've done a lot of shitty movies. Um, but I, I think when you know, you're in the script, oh, we can something special here and then you know so you're saying you like uh yeah. streaming like you like more of a, a, a condensed I season i think it's easier to keep the uh the level the quality level up but you still this is one thing i like why i i i tend to gravitate towards tv rather than film is because with the film i think i said this before a film the script is the beginning middle and end. it's all right there in front of you with a series you're on a journey and you don't know where where that journey is going to go for your character, for the story, for the relationships. You, it's, it's a journey, and I, I, I tend to enjoy that more. Well, I also don't think they're making the quality of movies they were making 20 years ago. No. Um, and I think the best writing and the best directing and the best acting is on television. Lately. It's series work. Yeah, yeah. it's series work. Yeah. So, I will, I'll, I'll say just because I'm thinking about your question, of just like what medium, um, and you know, doing a 23 episode network television show is a is a grind, and it's I mean I I know I did it for a solid 15 years. Um, you know, we I think what we had and with as much as we were doing, we turned out some really great stuff, and I, I think it's a testament to the people involved in that show. Yeah. They really invested and loved that show. I mean, when you're looking around and you're seeing the, the the PAs, the guys that are just hired to clean the you know change the garbage can. When they're sitting there reading the script that they got a hold of because they're fans of the show, I think it just it added a lot to that show. That being said, I also have done daytime soap operas, uh, which is pro. I did my, my record, I think it was 24 pages of dialogue in one day. Yeah, that's. Well, you know me. I, well, yeah. 2.4 pages of dialogue for you. Cue cards. Oh my God! I, I ended up having to tape. I taped his dialogue in my chest during one scene because I was like, "We just got to make our day here, pal." Just look at my tits. I'm never gonna fucking live it down. Ever. Every time I do a convention, he tells the story. 
I love that day. He's got legs! He was, and I was, he was so just, just mortified. And, but he, he had to do it. He's like, my brain is mush. He'd just come off of like a, a 14 hour day in Grey's Anatomy, went straight to the airport, hopped on a plane, and then started at 7 a.m. with us. Yeah. And he just, he was just a. And it was shock. also, it was like a, it was a huge, huge job. Yeah, yeah. And I remember I did, I had a post about on Jensen, I had him on Jared, I had him on, on the desk, desk. on the <laughs> wall. And I would just walk around and be like, like when I watched the scene, I'm like, what? Oh, what? This is good. It's only this. He's just reading his post-it notes. And it looked like I was thinking. That's it. By the way, 3M is going to be calling tomorrow for a post-it yeah. campaign. Um, but uh, that being said, the, the series work is movies, this uh, uh, streamers, soap operas. But if I had my choice yeah. pick, I would do half hour multi cam. Schedule wise, nothing. Better. Schedule wise, it is unbelievable. The fact that, like, when I think about friends, Friend. I'm like, it worked eight hours a week. At the end. And yeah, it was like eight hours a week. And they would turn that out. And it was, and they would do three weeks on, one week off. Yeah, and they were making, you know, a million dollars an episode. Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> pivot! Pivot! <laughs> so, uh. We're talking about a show that's 20 years ago, we're still jealous. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, my, one of my first gigs was a was a, a, a multi cam half hour. Me too. And and with Jason Bateman. Yeah. With, uh, with Jason Bateman. I Bateman. did a half hour with Jason Bateman called Black Sheep. Yeah. And I played I played Joey. I was Joey, and then I went and tested for Joey because I just played Joey, and I didn't get Joey. <laughs> and I'm still mad about it. Yeah, I would be. Oh, pissed. <laughs> God. Um, but man, that, it, because it's like, it's also like doing live theater every week, you know? You get an audience of like 200, 250 people in, in a small sound stage, and you put on a, you put on a show for them for two, three hours. And there was just something about it, and like, you it's know. It's good energy. It's great energy, and, and, and you, you're workshopping the material all week. You do a series, you go up, you block a scene, you might run it one time and then you're going to camera. Like there's, and that's why I think, you know, uh, guys like he and I, you can pretty much throw us into any situation and we'll be all right because we've been, been doing it for so long. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But multicam, whew, that's what it's at. But they don't make those shows much anymore. You know, there used to be a ton of them, but now there's only a handful. Sad. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Fucking sad. <laughs> On that note, hi. Way to break it down. Yeah. yeah. I want to say thank you very much. I write for a living, and I really appreciate what you said about writers, particularly with what's going on with the WGA right now. So thank you very much. Stay strong. We love our writers. We love our writers. Hi. You give credit where credit is due. Hello, my name's Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Speaking of baseball, I was wondering if you did make it to the pros, what would your walk-up song be? Oh. Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> uh, I just like that she think you'd have a walk-up song. <laughs> no, I, I, I know, because we used to play it in my at my high school games. The Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> the Natural. Oh. I like that movie. You guys know that movie? Yeah. If you don't, no, if you're here, if you haven't seen that movie. Lightning. The exit's right there. Uh, no, it's one of the greatest baseball movies of all time. That theme song, that's all I needed. That would, if I heard that, I'd, I'd probably immediately just start walking to a plate somewhere. Um, much like when I hear, anyone you want it there. I got out of my car during the guitar solo the other day because I was late, thought I was late for stage. <laughs> Seriously, that, they play that song, they put Jared and I on to that song every night. So it's like, anyone you want it Oh, gotta go, 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 go. Where's the microphone? Uh, 
Yeah. So you need to slow down. I need solos. <laughs> It'll lay off the drugs, man. Keep <laughs> the hell of a drug. <laughs> well, I like Wild Thing. What was that movie with Charlie Sheen? Uh, Major hey, League. Hey. Yeah. That was the best. That was a great one. That was a great walk up. Yeah, Charlie Sheen. Tyler, 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 Tyler. Thank you. Right. 
for the way you will not you take her. Night I would find me at Rose's Cantina. Music would play and Felino would whirl. You guys are so fucking easy. Hot crap. Hot crap. Hot crap. What you don't know, Denton, is that Rob has a whole version of that that's incredibly dirty that we've been doing for years. It's dirty El Paso. And <laughs> 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 Out in the dirty town of El Paso. It was one of those things where we, the joke would be we can't remember the words, right? And it was always in El Paso, and it's and it's oh, you know the song is <laughs> my sticker. My <laughs> stepdad. <laughs> Everything we just did was something like. <laughs> <laughs> How sorry are you going to be when this question? It was um, pretty damn good though! Uh, what is your go-to karaoke song? Huh? I'm really, I'm too young to like do karaoke a lot. You hear that, Rich? She's a little too young! For 30 El Paso! I'm sorry! Like I have the eight points! Lock it up! Ed Vanderbeek would get it! You should go, you 